Linwood Jackson every Sunday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. for the all-new Linwood Jackson radio show on WFAI 1510 AM. Every Sunday, Linwood will tackle the issues close to your heart from civil rights to politics to community affairs around the first state and the nation. Linwood speaks on the issues facing citizens in our area on a weekly basis, but his show is so much more. Linwood will talk about his passions, such as dancing and traveling the world and helping people broaden their horizons while embracing different cultures. That's the Linwood Jackson radio show every Sunday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. on the all-new WFAI 1510 A. Hello? This is Dave Tiberi. Linwood, how are you, sir? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be involved, and uh, I just, just finished a 5K here at the University of Delaware for um, autism. Yep, that's true. Yep, we just, we, uh, you know, my daughter's in a sorority that uh, put it on, and they raised some money for autism, which was a neat event. Oh, man, that's, that's, that's great. That's great. Uh, you don't know yeah, you know, then what, to me, it's is it, uh, a professional athlete, as you know, or a community leader like yourself. It's key for us to be uh, active in a community, especially like Delaware, where you can make such a difference. Uh, you're absolutely right. So you're right. So I've been watching. Yeah. 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 Correctly. Well, I, you know, it's it's. Uh, yeah, I know uh, some of the fighters that you're going to be talking to today. Uh, you know, it's it's nice that even with my boxing side, chance management. That was one of our commitments to get back involved with boxing was the fact that we can be an example. And when you got guys like Omar Douglas, Kamar Paisley, and Joey Tiberian, some of these fighters, the local fighters, there's a crop of fighters coming up in Delaware now we're really excited about. Uh, you're absolutely right, and I'm excited to have I have Omar here right now uh, with me. He's all mic'd up. Say, say hello, Omar. Hey, how you doing? Omar, how are you? I'm great. And yourself? Good. Your dad's been keeping me informed. It sounds like uh, this guy's going to be in trouble on May 9th. Yes, sir. Everything's been going great. Training camp's been going well. Well, there's no doubt that uh, the world's eyes on Omar Douglas. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I'm i on the phone a lot with Top Rank, Golden Boy, a lot of the promotions. And uh, and when you're on the radar screen, that means a lot in the sport of boxing. And you are, and you, you're you not only a great role model outside the ring, but what you're doing inside the ring is making a major difference. Yeah, Thank you're you. absolutely right, Dave. Now, uh, uh, you won the, the IBC Super Middleweight title back in 1991, and you lost a controversial IFB title fight uh, with Mr. James Tony in 92. Uh, do you remember that fight, man? Of course, I'm sure you remember that. Right. Well, you know, it's interesting. Is uh, 91 was, uh, was, a, a, was a great year because uh, Eddie Hall knocked out Iran Barkley, and I came back and knocked out Eddie Hall, and it created the opportunity. Uh, we were offered... Um, we were off of Roberta Duran and Sugar Ray Leonard, and they were on their way out. So it was like one of those fights that if you win, they say, so what? And if you lose, they're like, come on, you lost those guys almost washed up. So uh, we ended up getting the, the James Tony fight, which was a you know, great opportunity. And um, actually, what was neat about that fight, Midwood, is Bernard Hopkins, for six years, was my sparring partner. Before that fight, he emulated James Tony to a T. So with that, with that being said, there is no doubt that uh, – I was on a peak performance that day. Absolutely, man. You were well, well prepared for that fight. And I tell you, man, it, it was a big, big controversy. I actually thought you won that fight. Uh, James Tony actually came back 17 years later and admitted as much. Uh, what do you think about that message, man, that uh, Tony put out? Well, you know, I, it was interesting when, when, like yourself, other media outlets throughout the country called me and, and talked to me about it. And, and, and I jokingly said back, well, I knew that 17 years ago. And, but I, I respect, I respect uh, James Tony. I don't care if it was that day or 17 years later that, that he admitted it because that's, that's sports in general, you know? Yes. You know, you know when you're on that day. And I knew I was on that day. And, um, but I felt that it was bigger than what the stance I took was bigger than the James Tony fight. It was a sport that was truly operating operated in a world of darkness. And, and I had an opportunity to shine a light. Yes, you did very well, uh, in particular regards to the Ali bill, uh, the bill to help protect every fighter, the fighters out there. What, what's going on with that bill? Uh, you know, I, I, um, I had the privilege of working at the time with the late Senator Bill Wall, Senator John McCain, Senator Joe Biden. And um, they, I remember Senator Rolfe in his office one day said, Dave, one thing about with Congress, things don't happen overnight. So 10 years later, President Clinton signed the Ali bill to bring reform to the sport of boxing. Uh, as you know, by reading the information on that, the Ali bill is passed, which is, it starts addressing states that don't have a commission has to pull in the neighbor, neighboring commission as sanctions. So at least it started, you know, no pun intended, about filling bullet holes right. in different areas because of the abuses. Uh, but it's still, it's still too watered down. 
uh, it needs to be addressed where we're like basketball, football, and baseball, where there's a national commission unified. Yes. And, and, and Delaware does not have a boxing commission as of yet. Is that correct? No. The last time we had a boxing commission here in Delaware was Harold, Howard Webb. And that was back at the old days when I had fights at 48 Hall, Delaware Park, and, and, and the local areas. That's um, how far back that goes. Well, I, I, I tell you, Dave, you're, you're doing a lot of work in the community. You're bringing, uh, on your quest to bring uh, uh, big fights uh, here in Delaware. Uh, what do you see the future of Delaware boxing? Well, I, uh, I, I see right now uh, an opportunity uh, to bring HBO Showtime. I'm spending more time to serverly signing the right fighters and creating opportunities for our fighters here, but also bringing big-time boxing. You know, a lot of people don't know, in Delaware, back in the 50s and 60s, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, Rocky Marciano, some great fighters fought at the old Wilmington Blue Rock ballpark. Yes. A lot of fans don't even know that. That's right. So I want to return it back to Delaware because we are so centralized to be able to hold these big fights, and we deserve big fights here. I agree 100%. We got a, a lot of uh, champions here, yourself included. Uh, uh, Bernard Hopkins, you know, they had the big ticket uh, fight out in Vegas. And uh, uh, you said that you, you train with Bernard, or you helped train you. Now, we know he's an icon. He's way, I think he's calling himself the, the uh, alien now, the oldest world champion. I know he came to a lot of your fights. He supports boxing in Delaware as well. Well, he's also, a lot of people don't know, he's a partner in Golden Boy Boxing. So, and he lives... He lives off of Dirt Run Road here in Delaware. Uh, Michael Spinks as well, mm -hmm. calls Delaware home. So we have we have the support and the right people icons that have that are living in the area that support the area. Mm -hmm. um, but for Bernard, your question on Bernard, um, it's interesting. One thing I remember with Bernard, we were at Split Rock when he was getting ready for the Tony fight, mm -hmm. and he and I was in his hotel room with, like fighters do. Mm -hmm. We were sitting strategizing things I need to do, and and I just remember he had just. It looked like he was grounding roots. It was just, it was like real dark brown and it looked like a mess. He goes, Dave, I want you to try this. Right. But Lord, his health habits, he eats so good. The way he eats, he drinks, and he trains. He doesn't do that only on fight time. He does that year round. Oh, it's Linwood, it's awesome to see this guy. He's so disciplined in regards to what he puts in his body. And so it, it goes it goes a long way, uh, you know, keeping yourself in shape uh, into boxing. So I guess you'll be coming back in the ring one of these days. <laughs> uh, you're in some pretty good shape, man. I, I met you out at the Bob Carpenter Cellar. Hey, hey, Dave, tell us real quick. I'm going to let you go, man. I, I know you're, you're out there supporting this, this this big cause here, autism. Out there. We want to shine a light on that uh, as well. But tell us a little bit about your, your fight you got coming up Friday. Well, thank you, Linwood. Thanks for, thanks for the opportunity, and, and, and uh, you're going to love Omar. Uh, what a great guy, great family. Uh, right now, May 9th, uh, we're bringing two major fights. Well, three, actually, because Omar Douglas is going to be one of his bigger fights as well. So the three feature fights on this card are going to be incredible. And then uh, Joey Tiberi is doing a six, uh, he's sort of six-rounder, and it's going to be the biggest fight he's ever fought. So the matchups on the fight are very unique, very competitive. Uh, but... What I love about it is, Ray, this is the first fight Ray Robinson returns home as number eight in the WBO. WBO, when he scored the big win last fight at the Riverdown, he fought the 25-0 and 0 guy from Russia. Ray catapulted to number eight. And then the WBC, which is Mayweather's the champion, uh, he's number 10 now. So he's a phone call away. Anytime you're in the top 10, you can get a phone call from any of those cha either champion. Right. So uh, we're looking at uh, Medina or, or Mayweather, or you have a Pacquiao out there. Uh, he's in line to fight one of those guys. Is that correct? That's correct. We have we have been uh, verbally talking with Khan. We've been talking to. So we're in we're in the right position there. And then then we have we have uh, uh, the NABA champion Cornelius Locke, who fought who had literally a big fight against Mikey Garcia mm -hmm. in the eleventh round and got stopped. And that was a very controversial fight. He's going to be our co-feature main event, and and he's fighting. He's going to be fighting a big fight uh, for the NABA title in a top ten world ranking. Well, so, it, do, it doesn't get any that, better than he's that. He's in position at 126, which is another really popular division. Of course, Omar, Omar's got to tell you his story because Omar is, is just so much fun to watch. I mean, oh, I mean, and I think he's always been a local fan favorite, so I don't think that's going to change at all. Uh, junior lightweight champ, five-time Pennsylvania Golden Glove state champ here. Uh, he's sitting right here. We're looking forward to speaking with him and uh, about the upcoming fight. Now, uh, tell us, uh, in closing, you got anything uh, you want to say to your fans, man? Well, I would, I, I would encourage the Delaware fans. I mean, I know that uh, you've always come out to support me and, uh, and, and Dougie Patterford and Henry Milligan. You've always supported the local boxers. Absolutely. The only way we're going to keep big boxing in Delaware is for you to come out and support it. So 
if you go, uh, I know uh, Omar, we got his phone number for tickets as well. Right. They can go to champsmanagement.com to buy tickets. Get your tickets because Friday night's right upon us, and we need a big fan, local fan base to support our local fighters. Dave Tiberi, we appreciate all the efforts you're doing here to bring boxing and, and big-time boxing here in the state of Delaware. Uh, we commend you for your effort, and you put us on the map back with your James Tony fight, man. Thanks for spending your time with us on the Little Jackson Radio Show. Well, thank you very much. You're always supportive, and we appreciate that. All right, buddy. Talk to you next time. Can't yes, wait to get you in the studio now. All right. I can't wait, too. God bless. Again, if you want tickets and transportation uh, to the fight coming up Friday night, May 9th, uh, you can call the area code 267-258-9775. And you can meet the bus going down there at 500 Wilmington Avenue at Terminal Avenue in Wilmington, Delaware. That's uh, there in Southbridge for you local guys here. And it's leaving at 5 p.m. The city of Wilmington is firmly uh, backing up this effort uh, to bring boxing in the great state of Delaware. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and bring my guest in, in studio guest in here. Uh, he is a five time Pennsylvania Golden Glove State champion. He's, uh, he won one national uh, title. As an amateur, uh, fighting, oh man, I think he fought over 100 fights as an amateur. He's sitting right here. You can correct me if I'm wrong. He's current junior light heavyweight NABA champion, and Omar Super O. Douglas. Omar, come on in here, man. How you doing today? I'm doing fine. And yourself? I'm fabulously well, thank you. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Did I miss something there? Did I get your intro right? Uh, uh, junior lightweight NABA Ju champion. Ju current. Current. And you're on uh, you're on the card uh, fighting uh, May 9th? Yes, sir. And who was your opponent this time? Uh, my opponent, uh, we had an opponent at fir uh, first name, uh, Noel and uh, Archavea, and mm -hmm. uh, he had pulled out at the last minute. So uh, we got another opponent now, mm -hmm. and his name is Jesse yeah, hold, oh, Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. Now. You can speak in the mic. We have uh, uh, Omar's manager here. Uh, okay. Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is uh, Omar Sharif. Sharif. Yeah. Omar Douglas's father and manager. That's it. And he has the facts as the manager of Omar. So I'm asking a few questions. He might be better prepared to answer. So uh, uh, now how many amateur fights did you have, Omar? Uh, I had 165. I'm going to call you Super O to keep it. Okay. So uh, we don't <laughs> con we confuse the audience. 165 amateur fights. And what are you doing now? You, you, you just told us about the, the fights you got coming up. And uh, is your, your belt on the line? Uh, not this fight. Uh, this fight, I'm just staying warm, just staying ready, and uh, waiting for bigger and better opportunities. Yeah, who would be your ideal fighter? Uh, my right ideal now. fight right now would be. Uh, <laughs> it don't matter how long. No, nah, it, it really, it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody at 130, anybody at 135, eventually, and uh, I plan on moving up to 140 once I uh, take care of business at 130 and 135. All right, now, 135. And where do you train at? Uh, I train at Wilmington and uh, William Hicks Anderson Community Center. I've been there now for uh, 13 years. I was trained by the uh, late Lewis Lum, and now I'm trained by Douglas Pettifor. All right, and what is a typical day of training like for you? Uh, a trip how, do, how does one become a champion, man? <laughs> uh, it depends. Uh, I like to mix it up a lot. Some days I go for uh, very long runs in the morning, like around 7, in between 7 and 8. And then I go home, I have a little breakfast or whatever, and then I'm back in the gym in the evenings from mm -hmm. 5 to 8. And uh, some days we travel to spar. It depends. I like to mix it up. I like to mix it up a lot. Okay, so some days you work in this part, and the second, and other days you work in the other part, I suppose. Yes, sir. All right. And, and then, uh, uh, so how would you describe your style of fighting, man? Uh, I'm pretty much a boxer puncher. Like, I can, I'm a... Uh, I can box, but I can also punch. Uh, I love walking guys down, and I'm a big body puncher. And I have great, I have great power. I'm, I believe that I bring a lot of drama to the fights. That's why the fans love to see me. And when, what are your thoughts about going into to this fight? Uh, you said this is warm up for you. Yes, going into this fight, um, every fight for me is very important. I fight every fight like I'm fighting the best fighter in the world, regardless of his record. Like I say, every fight I'm preparing for the Mayweathers of the world mm -hmm. and the Madonnas and the Broners of the world is what I prepare for when I'm in the gym. Are these the guys you day. consider as the top top boxers in the world? Yes, sir. And Mayweather. And who was your toughest opponent so far? Uh, my toughest opponent as a pro. Hmm, that's a great question. Oh, it was this one kid I had for um, 
last June, and he was pretty tough. I mean, I had knocked him down. He had got back up, and I had knocked him down again. And he just like he just kept trying and kept trying, and um, he posed a little bit of a threat. And I had to go back to my corner, and we uh, adjusted the game plan, and we came out victorious with a third round knockout. Who was in your corner? Uh, Douglas Pettifor <coughs> and my brother Olu Douglas, which is my assistant trainer. I know you're young. What are you, what are you 23? Yes, sir. And we we talked about Bernard Hopkins earlier, going into 49, the oldest guy out there in, in history. Does it surprise you that boxers are boxing longer? Uh, yes, yeah, especially uh, a guy, especially knowing that guys like uh, Sugar Ray Leonard and them guys at, at, 30, at 37, 35, them guys was pretty much them guys was pretty much at the end of their careers. And just to see Bernard do it the way he has been is an amazing thing. I know that's right. Now. And how long do you plan on fighting, man? Uh, not that long. Not that long. Uh-oh. <laughs> You're going to get the money and get out, huh? Yes, sir. I mean, I love the sport, and I, I plan on doing a lot in the sport other than boxing, you know, other than fighting. But, um, but yeah, I plan on getting in and out of the sport. Because now, I, mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. little guys, their career tend not to be that long. So, like, guys like B-Hop, um, you know, at light heavyweight, the pace slows down. And you can make the fights look real easy. And at my weight class, it's really a bunch of punches. And there's really a lot of activity. So, at 35, you know, it's going to be pretty hard to stay that active as, you know, as a fighter at 35 and at a very fast pace. Right, right. I tell you what, man. Now you're doing a lot of work in the community as well. We just talked to uh, 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 Dave Tiberi, and he's out there at the uh, speaking out for autism in our community. His family's involved in that. And I know you and your family are involved in the community as well. Uh, tell us some of the community events that you're involved in. Um, a few months ago, I had spoke at Rodney Square to tell the children stay in school, and uh, I also appeared at the Y a few months back. To also tell the, the, the children at the Y to stay in school and how important school is and how uh, school, as far as, you know, going to college and all that can provide better opportunities for you, such as uh, such as work. And even if you play basketball and you love sports, I mean, I tell them guys that have hoop dreams, you know, go to college. I mean, don't, uh, you know, don't stray away from going to college because also, you know, you can... Uh, through your basketball talents, you can also get uh, an opportunity to go to school and provide for your family. I mean, and, uh, a lot of a lot of young basketball players don't make it to the NBA. So it's, uh, there's other things out here to do other than play basketball. You can also go to school and just volunteer in the community. You're absolutely right. In other words, uh, just because you have, uh, you're have, you gifted as a great athlete or a performer, singer, uh, actor, or whatever you're gifted at, and you still want to have a backup plan. Yes, sir. Uh, because uh, that may not uh, carry you on as far as you want to have something back. As a matter of fact, most of the uh, performers and athletes that I know of all have a backup plan. They stayed in school, got their degrees and, and this, that, or other, learned a particular trade. Everybody's not cut out to be a, a rocket scientist or a surgeon or anything. You know, we have building trades out there, electrical, the woodworkers, and painters and all kinds of uh, trades that's needed as well. So uh, that's a good message. I'm, I'm sure that's what you would share. You know, uh, here in the city of Wilmington, we have a high uh, uh, crime rate, homicide rate. And uh, so the advice that you just gave uh, Super O, uh, Douglas, uh, is some great advice. I hope that uh, the young folks listen to you when you're out there in the schools uh, speaking to them. We're going we're gonna to take a quick break. Uh, we're going to come back, and, and I'm going to try to uh, play uh, one of the interviews that I did at the International Boxing Hall of Fame and give you guys a treat today. We have Mr. Julian Jackson, the Hawk, three-time, two-weight class world champion, considered one of the hardest punchers pound for pound uh, in history. Ranked number 25 on Ring Magazine's list of 100 greatest punchers of all time. He beating uh, Buster Drayton and Terry Norris. He has a record of 55 wins, 6 losses, and 49 KOs. Inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame uh, in New York and California. 
Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, my friend Super O to take us to break. I am Omar Super O Douglas, and you are listening to the Linwood Jackson Radio Show on WFAI 1510 AM. And we'll be right back. And we're uh, having a, gr- a blast, and I just ran up on Mr. Jules Jackson, a waterweight champion of the world, and he was a knockout artist. I know you guys are familiar with him. Jules Jackson, how you doing, brother? I'm doing great, man. Um, you know, my son is Julius Jackson. I'm Julian Jackson. Julian Jackson. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's a, just a tremendous uh, privilege for me to be here, you know, in Catasota. Um, this is my first time here to the International uh, Hall of Fame. And um, I tell you what, I feel right at home. Yes, yes. And are you tr- are, are you training your son? Yes, I'm, I'm training um, both my son, uh, you know, uh, Julius Jackson, who's uh, he's a super middleweight, you know, 168 pounds. And uh, right now he's undefeated, you know, and uh, a tremendous uh, uh, boxer, you know. He loves to box. He loves to, you know, get in there and trade off. And um, he can take a good punch. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just an exciting thing to see your, your kids, you know. I would say taking the baton and going with it now, you know? Absolutely. And, um, you know, the, the good thing about it is that they respect the sport. Yes. And I feel that the sport will respect them because of that. Absolutely. And um, uh, I'm a, a living testimony of that, you yes. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, I thank God uh, for the opportunity to be here. I mean, um, uh, it's amazing to see all the champions in this one, you know, in, in one place. And uh, the sparks are coming back in their eyes, you know? Yes, yes. And I think that this, this is something that boxing needs and uh, to keep the sport alive and I, I believe that the sport is making a, a comeback yeah you know and uh, with what's happening today it's tremendous and uh, again you know it's just a, a tremendous opportunity absolutely well you are a great champion tell us a little bit some of the memorable fights that you had in the ring oh man uh, one of my, my, my most memorable fight uh, I, I guess was um, Terry Norris yeah you know the upcoming uh, fighter young strong you know, and I uh, was able to, uh, you know, knock him out in the third round. Yeah. Uh, I remember a, a, a very noticeable uh, fight as well uh, was uh, Buster Drayton. Yeah. Yeah, when I, I caught him with a punch and I, I you know, I made the, I, I literally told him where to fall. <laughs> it was like almost a tree. I know, you were, you were killing him. Knockout artist. Yeah, and, um, you know, there's a lot of different fights that I've had, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the, the, the fights that really make me mm-hmm. was when I fought um, Mike McCollum in Miami yeah and I lost that fight yeah. but that fight made me you yeah. know and um, sometimes you'll be surprised you know a loss can actually be a win for you mm-hmm. and uh, that loss was a win for me and it, it caused me to really find myself and understand certain things God came into my life mm-hmm. after that fight mm-hmm. you know and uh, went on and actually became a world champion after that fight. Absolutely, and you are a Hall of Famer. Yes, um, also was inducted in um, the Hall of Fame uh, over in um, California. Yes, and, and along with Mike McCullen and Terry yes. Norris, you yes. fought big time uh, uh, champions, and, you, and you, now you're training your son yes. to get there as well. And, and it, there's this actor taking our picture over it. I'll tell you, it just doesn't get any better than this. What do you think about the fans here at the International Box Hall of Fame? Oh, man, I, I think it's incredible. You know, um, the, like I said, um, boxing is, is, is really alive here in Kenesota. And uh, just actually celebrating, um, you know, boxing here again is, is something that uh, I think a lot of fighters miss. And uh, this tend to bring back a lot of memories, you know. And um, I'm glad to see Ernie Shavers and, uh, you know, uh, 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 Leon, you know. Leon all, Spinks. Spinks, Marvin Hagler. Marvin Hagler oh, and uh, you got all the, all the young and the young fighters as well. You know, fighters that are still, you know, involved in, in, in actually uh, competing. And um, it's, it's just a, a tremendous, um, you know, opportunity. And it gives you such a, a tremendous feeling. And um, yes. boxing, the spirit of boxing is still alive. Yes, yes, absolutely. Now, do you have any advice you would give to the young folks up and coming? boxers oh man boxers you better sport. believe it um, I, I really believe that um, anything you get into you know you have to have uh, respect mm-hmm. um, you know for the sport of boxing mm-hmm. and um, for anything really you know yes. I, I think your attitude towards the sport that you're in towards whatever you're involved in business no matter what it is you know you have to have some level of respect you know and the, and the more I think you respect that particular, uh, uh, you know, sport or, 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 or career that you have. Yeah. I really believe that you're gonna, it's gonna respect you, and uh, and eventually you're gonna be become somebody. You're gonna make a name 
you know, irregardless. And I think that's what, you know, I did. I was able to respect the sport, yeah. and the sport has respected me. And I, I, I tell you what, you know, uh, even though I, I, I may not have made the millions of dollars like they're making today, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I tell you what, I really believe in my heart. You know what I mean? That it did something to, for me as a person. You know, and I've learned to live, you know, with people. I've learned to meet different types of people and understand that, you know what? We're all in this, in, you know, we're all in this thing together. Right. And uh, God, you know, yeah. I believe is, is, is the one that guides us. And once we follow that, you know, that, 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 that basic principle mm -hmm. is to respect each other and humble ourselves, I think we're going to go a long way. Absolutely, Chairman. Yeah. Well said. Now, I, I was talking to your son earlier, and he was telling me about uh, the uh, uh, technology out here that's available today. Um, uh, what do you think about technology as, as it pertains to boxers and the sport? Um, well, well that, you know, I, I realize today, you know, you have a whole different... Uh, I think um, breed of fighters that are now uh, promoting. Mm -hmm. You know, you have fighters that are actually boxing, and they are the promoters. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You right. understand That's that? Right. That's right. And, Bernard uh, Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins, uh, De La Hoya. You know, you know, you have Floyd Mayweather, right. who has made uh, a, a history. You know, yes, and yes. the high speed athlete right now and um, it's amazing and I think it all has to do with technology as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and a lot of these guys are selling themselves you know not in a in a negative way but in a very positive way you know and uh, it is something that uh, I think it, it has taken boxing to a next level yes sir raising the bar mm -hmm. now, That's right. now you know you said earlier how much you love your fans and you know your fans love you tell us uh, is there any way we can contact you are you out in social media like Facebook or Twitter well um, I'm Facebook you know, and uh, we have a promotion back home in the um, in my country, in the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. You know, it's called 340 Promotion, and you can get on the website. Yeah. You know, 340 Boxing, and uh, you know, check us out. 340boxing.com. Yes, 340boxing.com. Yes, I, I can give you a, a card as well. Okay. And um, you know, we invite anybody to you know check us out and, uh, and see what's going on in the sport of boxing in the Virgin Islands. In the Virgin Islands. You better is, believe is that it. Where your son is training at. Right yes, now. that's I where know he's training. You're training at. him and his training camp is in the islands. Yes. It doesn't get any better than the Virgin Islands. Hey, Chan, we appreciate you taking time out and speaking with us. And uh, uh, here at the International Boxing Hall of Fame, we hope that you come down here again. And uh, we'll certainly be checking out your website. And we wish you luck. Well, we know you're good, at, but uh, and your son yeah. as well uh, in his future boxing endeavors. Thank you very much, man. It's been a pleasure. God Thank bless. You. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Uh, uh, and uh, um, we... We do have the International Boxing Hall of Fame coming up again this year. Uh, actually, that interview was 2013, and uh, we've gone into the class of 2014 this year with Mr. Oscar De La Hoya being inducted, uh, Mr. Felix Trinidad, Mr. Joe Kawasaki, Richard Steele, Neil Lofer, Barry Helm, and Mr. Graham Houston are the live uh, uh, inductees uh, this year. So we're looking forward to going down to the 25th annual induction weekend, June 5th uh, to 8th, 2014. They have the modern, which is the ones I just mentioned, uh, the old timers, the pioneers, non-participants, and the observers at the International Boxing Hall of Fame 25th annual induction weekend. Again, we just listened to the great interview that I had, one of the biggest interviews I've had uh, up to date with Mr. Julian Jackson, the Hawk, three-time uh, two-way class world champion, considered one of the hardest pound for pound. We have uh, another up-and-coming uh, boxer sitting in the studio here with us today, Mr. Omar Super O. Uh, Douglas, what do you think about that interview you just heard, uh, Super O? Uh, I think it was great. Uh, he actually inspired, inspired me. I watched a lot of Julian Jackson uh, and, you know, just getting, just preparing for fights. I watched a lot of him, and I actually watched the fight with him and Terry Norris, and it was a great knockout. Wow. I'll I tell you what, yeah, the one he, he, all of it, well, he's a knockout artist, and uh, I'll never forget the one with Buster Drayton where uh, he actually knocked him out. I think it was, a, caught him with a right, and then and actually to the canvas. pointed to exactly <laughs> where my man was going to fall. I, 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 I couldn't believe it. It was a one for all times. You can check those out on, on YouTube as well. Uh, but uh, we are talking about your fight, upcoming fight this Friday, uh, May 9th. Tell us a little bit about that. Where's it going to be at again? It's going to be at Dover Downs at the Rowland Center, and I believe the car starts at 730. 
uh, at 7 p.m. And uh, uh, we have your, your manager here. Maybe we'll, he'll fill us in on a little bit more of the details how we can get tickets. How can we get tickets? Uh, um, you, can, you can get tickets by um, really um, contacting me um, at 267-258-9775. Again, that's 267 267- Two five eight nine seven seven five, and we can make um, we can make arrangements in case you need transportation. The city has been so kind to provide um, how much, however much um, transportation we need. We just need to reserve and make sure we have um, um, the proper vehicle in place. So, if you can give me a call, um, we can we can get something reserved before Wednesday. Um, then we can make for make sure a a uh, a seat is provided for you. Um, we'll be leaving Wilmington um, from the uh, city yard over South Bridge. I guess the address is 500 Wilmington Avenue at Terminal Avenue, and that's um, right at the bottom of South uh, South Bridge. So we're leaving there at five. We'll probably be returning um, maybe like 12, 12 a.m. in the morning. Right after the fight on May 9th down in uh, Dover Downs uh, Hotel and Casino. It's a great card, guys. Uh, I think the way in is is Thursday. Dave Tiberi and, and his crew are bringing in boxing uh, to Delaware, big-time fights, and we're glad to be a part of that uh, as well. Now, now you're, uh, you're, you're Omar's manager, and you're also a poet, and you write books and stuff as well. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, went with, I, I just wanted to make myself available as a voice. You know, sometimes somebody needs to ask the questions, um, you know, and, and and seek the answers. I, I I can't really answer all the questions, but if the questions are out there, then maybe someone out there could 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 try to find the answer. The answer to our um, like, the book answers the problems in our community, and and when it comes to managing managing Omar and the other boxers at the gym, you know, they're trying to transcend from amateurs to pros, and someone needs to ask those questions to make sure those guys are um well taken care of and safe. So. That that's kind of what I do, just to to give back. So that's another part of your job. That's another part of my job. Man, your your hands are full. You're writing, <laughs> uh, speaking, and managing. And I bet you were training there for a minute. How many uh, boxes do you manage besides your son? <clears throat> well, r- right now I, it's um, the the guys that are pros in the gym. There's, there's Anthony Miller is in the gym. Um, he, he he's up and coming. He he's just he just had his second professional fight. Um, we have a fighter who who joined us from from out Kennet, PA. He wanted um he wanted a good strong team behind him, so he he came to our gym. So I'm I'm um I I, I help him in his career. That's the bull, Anthony Caputo. Um, he's also fighting on another card on uh, May 9th. Right. Um, there's a uh, Chuchi Hernandez. Um, he's had one professional fight. Um. I'm, I'm. We're in the process of securing another fight for him now. So, those those are the guys we're working with right now. Um, but any guy in that gym who needs um, help in any kind of way, um, I'm there to be there for them. Now, how long have you been managing? Well, as long as really professional managing, as long as Omar has been pro. Um, how long has Omar been pro? Uh, it's been. We, we're closing out on three years now mm-hmm. in August. And I know he had a long amateur career. Yeah, pretty long amateur career. Um, we've always um, been there in his co- in his corner and supported him. Um, the uh, boxing community in Wilmington, within the center, is very strong. There's a lot of guys in there who've come up through 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 um, the Wham Hick Center. So um, I've always just been a a, a a a parent and supporter of the gym. So it it was quite natural when they needed somebody to fill in that role to help these guys transcend to the next stage. Um, I was there, and and again, I'm there to ask the promoters and everybody the questions um, so that these guys could um, have a smooth smooth career right and you got your your kids in the gym early and you know one of our sayings uh here on our show uh is to put the guns down and pick the gloves up you know get into a gym somewhere and do some training uh, get yourself in health uh, uh you know physical shape is a whole lot better than what are your thoughts on uh the, the violence out here in the city what do you think uh we can do uh to curtail that a little bit well again um what i what i really think is is, is that um our younger folk, our young adults, our young adults need something to do. Um, <clears throat> I came up on the north side of town. There was um, Browns Boys Clubs there, and there were always um, 
good brothers there to talk to when you were going through things in your life and not only having some place to go but some some place to go where you have good people there that can help you through the um the hardships in life and help you answer questions. I mean sometimes guys just find themselves in situations and don't know how to answer the question so violence becomes the answer so if if we could just have um again some place where those 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 young folk could go i want to say children because right now it seems that they're focusing a lot on our younger very young children but it's those young adults that i personally choose not to forget about those 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 15 16 7 year olds those they are in tough places sometimes and they need somebody to help them answer those tough questions you're absolutely right uh i agree 100 percent. and they, we need to be there to mentor them and guide them and help them uh, uh learn the way i think we need to teach them conflict resolution exactly how to resolve their conflicts uh, by speaking it out you know mm -hmm. somebody walking on somebody's foot and getting shot is just like uh, preposterous uh, so i think we need to teach that in school how to resolve your conflicts in a, in a non-violent way uh as opposed to killing us remember back in the day when we were coming up you know uh you had a little fist fight and then the next day you were friends and uh, friends forever you know what i mean respecting each other it wasn't none of this here killing we got to stop you all we're doing is annihilating ourselves uh, exactly. and our people's uh so i'm glad you guys came on the show and decided to share that with who, who do you think would be omar's ideal opponent well <clears throat> right right now again when you when you i find that when you're coming up and when you're where omar is he's 11 and 0 with nine knockouts so um, the industry says that the next guy he faces will be someone on this on that on that similar level. Somebody's coming up who's been through the same things he's been through. So we just taking our time and and and, um, and taking it one step at a time. But you always, as Omar said, you always focus on the top guys in that division. So the guy, the people who even the average fans see on TV. That's who when you look in the mirror when you're in the gym. That's who you see in front of you. You know, so so, and you and and we bring those kind of guys from all from from all over the um the tri-state area. Those kind of guys come into our gym and train with us, so that we can make sure that our fighters are on that equal level. And so far, we've had three or four fighters who have more than proven themselves to be on a on on a on a high level. I know that's right. Uh, Delaware is full of uh, uh, great fighters and athletes as, as well actually and I'm gonna I'm I'm flip the page on you a little bit man I, I want you to you know we got a little time left I want you to share with us uh, uh, some of the poetry uh, that you've done there you write poetry is that correct oh uh, yes I write poetry so you're um, a writer yeah I'm a writer um, I have I, I did accomplish getting um, a, a one a book published um, it, it was something that I really really wanted to accomplish and that's uh, we, good that's we was um, <clears throat> able to get that done um with the help of um uh, uh um where rare publications dave where i'm dave where yes with he did a fantastic job with my book wow and um it, it's really it's a it's a book of um it's a book of um what's the name of the book um i have named her inspiration i have named her inspiration, inspiration. exactly so there's a there's a lot of love poetry in there but um they are they are bent towards the things that we go through um in our lives and relationships and and the ideal is to show that even though we go through things um it's most important that we continue to love each other um so so that's how that's that that book uh, that book is focused on that right um but i i do a lot of um shows throughout this community uh, i'm involved with uh peace love and Peace, love, and poetry with um, Sister Fran Sean, and we take on issues. Her her shows take on different issues, with different shows. So, um, the problems in our community, we, we 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 take on those things also in our poetry. Sweet Fran Sean, love, peace, and poetry. You guys uh, do, from what I understand, you you're on the mic, maybe open mic or whatever, and uh, you have music behind you as you read off your poetry. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, if, if a poet chooses to have uh, music behind them, some poets just like to, um, you know, like to go without music. I, I, I can do either or, depending on um, what the what the show is, what's needed in the show. Um, we we have a um, fantastic band that we perform with, um, um, Best Kept Soul. Uh, they do a fantastic job, and and they have they have. Um, <clears throat> they really know how to f follow a poet and, and let a poet do what he do, and, and they are right where they need to be all the time. 
Uh, do you have plans for writing another book? Um, yeah, so, some of the some of the social social things um, that that are uh, um, that are ailing our our neighborhood. I plan to take those on also. Um, but at this at this time, you kind of like kind of like try to uh, pick the ways that are best to, to to deal with the situation now. And being in that boxing gym every day with those young guys, I can really I, I focus my attention on on the guys that come in we can do one-on-one -on -one mentoring at any moment you know a guy comes in he has a bad day i can i can talk to him uh, and, and we can um resolve some things so when i go when i go out and do my my poetry i mean i've, I've performed in, in some schools and, and 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 got some things said that need to be said to our young folk all right now using your poetry uh earlier we were talking about the different crafts and the different skill sets available you know uh, so you're not only uh, managing boxers and boxing in the gym uh, you're getting on the stage and you're a writer as well uh, which goes without saying i can't write nothing man uh, tell me about your writing what what inspires you to write where do, how long have you been writing well um <clears throat> I've been writing for a mighty long time, man. I, I, I um, in, in in high school, cause you. Did. Okay, then I'll leave it at that. Okay, in a mighty long time. Yeah. We won't age you on yeah, our yeah, show, yeah, 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 but yeah. we'll we'll. I'll believe you when you said so. A long time, and uh, what inspired you? I, I, I come from a um, a family that that have artists in in, in our background. They they are. Um, I have I have an uncle. That is a, a, a fabulous um, artist in every way. He's good with his he's good with his hands. Um, he's good with his mind. He's I actually actually he would be considered an Egyptologist. Um, so he he's that good with it. So okay. basically, basically when I when I take on poetry, I'm I'm trying to um, live up to the high mark that he has set. You know, that's a good point you just made. You know, when we raise the bar and then we watch people uh, achieve it or reach or try to reach and obtain that level that you raised it to. You know what I mean? Uh, if you if you raise if you got your bar set low, then they won't they won't go nowhere. Right. You raise it high and then watch them miraculously achieve that goal. You know, we're shooting for the moon, but we land on the stars. It's a lot further than where we started from. Uh, that's a great advice. Uh, you give our kids something to reach for. So you're you're a writer and you, you, you're speaking your poetry and you're out there working in the community. It, you, what do you guys, uh, I know you're focused on the fight in front of you. Uh, what do you plan on doing after this fight here? Um, I'm sure you're going to stay in the gym, but do you have any community events lined up where you're speaking at if somebody wanted to contact you with regards to your book writing or or the boxing how would they contact you okay. are you on facebook and what do you think about the social media pages okay so i'm on fa i'm on facebook um omar sharif is my name i guess omar sharif forward slash oh three there's a there's a lot of omar sharifs um you can reach me you can catch me there um passion poet on twitter um, that that's my handle there, I guess, if that's what you call that. And mm -hmm. um, um, osharif dot com is where I, I try to keep up um, with some things. You'll you'll get some idea of what Omar has going on. Um, I have an, another son who is in who's a clothing designer. His stuff is there. Um, so there's there's some ways out there to make contact with us, and we're open. Like um, <clears throat> again, I. I I have my hands on the guys in the gym, so and it and those guys work very hard. So, what advice do you give them with regards to anything? Writing, poetry, boxing. What's your number one advice or tip that you would give the young folks who may be listening today? Um, sit down on some things. A lot of times, there's so many things um, vying for our attention. Um, if you deem something to be um, positive something a, a way that you can um escape from the ills that go on then sit down on that and, and make sure like if there if you if you're in a sport and they have practice every day you know obligate yourself make practice every day you're talking about the parents well whoever and okay. anything that, and, and the parents and, obviously should support them uh, 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 most definitely mm -hmm. mr most definitely but if we come from like some of the guys that that we deal with in the gym there 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 are no sub parents there that that can support right i mean they're busy trying to make sure um they have food in their mouths and things like that so a lot of times the parents just can't support so so you have to um really look within yourself and find what, what you need to um to persevere 
And that's why I commend you, man. Uh, you know, our kids, like you said, a lot of them don't have that support. And you guys are in the gyms uh, uh, mentoring our young folks to try to guide them in the right direction to keep them off the streets and killing each other. That's a fabulous thing, uh, mentoring. And now uh, your book, real quick, how can we buy it? Um, again, you on the, Amazon? Or? Uh, uh, um, we're not on. We're not on Amazon, but we are, we are either do do where. Through Ware Publications, through the, um, I'm not sure if his um Dave Ware Publications. Dave, <laughs> Dave Ware Publications. Shout out to Dave Ware. Yes, sir. I know um, he's listening. Um, anytime you hear that any peace, love, and poetry events coming down and going on, I'm I'm around. I have the book with me there, and I can always be reached at my number two six seven two five eight nine seven seven five. All right, I know that's right. Uh, uh, Super O. Yes, sir. Uh, you got any um, closing remarks you want to give to your fans, man? Uh. I'm going to ask y'all to come out to the fight May 9th. Uh, like I said before, I have put in a lot of work. I've been in the gym for 13 years now. And I, uh, I've been taking care of business. And I'm just asking for your support. I want y'all to support y'all champion. I'm the champion here at Delaware right now. And I bring a lot of action and drama to the fight. Uh, them things that boxing need, that Mike Tyson provided, the drama, the power. I bring all that to the fight. And... Y'all could, uh, and you know, once the dust once the dust settles, I will be victorious once again. All right, that's what I'm talking about, man. Action packed. You're bringing the smoke, bringing the heat, and we do support you and the other local champions out there as well. You, you said it uh, perfectly, and uh, yeah, I want to thank you again for coming on. You shared a lot of information with us. And uh, what do you think about the uh, social media out there today and how it affects boxing and boxers? Uh, uh, I know you're on it. I know you probably don't have a lot of time to spend on it, right. uh, but do you think that uh, you guys are are you watching the pages? Or does it? Uh, what do I, be- you think? I believe it's a great thing. Um, it could be a bad thing, and it could be a great thing. It depends on how you use it. Like, uh, most, of, most of the guys that uh, my, are my fans, most of my fans are able to get in contact with me and are able to keep up with some of the stuff I got going on and uh, different dates and different things I might be involved in. So I think the social media thing is a great thing. Well, it is, and and you're absolutely right, man. No no other time in history can fans get right up close and personal uh, with their favorite uh, uh, performers, including boxers. Uh, You guys are right there uh, in in real time, uh, tweeting and twittering, and uh, uh, and we certainly will looking forward to seeing you in the ring uh, this Friday, May 9th at 7 p.m. Dover Downs Hotel and Casino. Again, if you guys need tickets. And transportation, leaving out of Wilmington, you can call Mr. Omar Sharif at 267-258-9775. The bus will be leaving promptly at 5 and from 500 Wilmington Avenue and Terminal Avenue in Wilmington, Delaware, right there in South Bridge. Uh, uh, we got to support our young heroes when they're doing great things. Uh, Omar is in here five-time Pennsylvania Golden Glove champion, he won one national champion, a current junior lightweight NABA champ, doing some great things, and uh, we certainly want to want to get out there and support that. And we want to thank his father for coming in and sharing advice uh, with uh, regards to writing a book, book of poetry. And what's the name of that book again? I have named her Inspiration. I have named her Inspiration, and you talk about inspiring love and peace. Uh, you certainly want to get this book because that's what we're talking about. We want to bring some uh, respecting our, our women and our females, man. The main thing, we want to get rid of some of them words, the H word and the B word, and put some respect out in there. Exactly. Uh, after all, our ladies, uh, you know, they're the ones that gave birth to us. Uh, they loved us, clothed us, fed us, just kept making sure we had a roof our head, kept us in school, and then we grow up become men and we marry these women and then they give birth to our children so we got to give them what they deserve love peace and respect and happiness love your ladies guys uh, i know valentine's day is celebrated the one month in february one day in february uh, and we give our give them candy and f- roses and stuff like that i think we need to do that all the time right you know what i mean every I, day I, man I you gotta love our women and stop disrespecting them and uh now okay that might be every day i don't even think they want candy and roses every day uh, but uh but at least once a week uh, we can tell them that we love them and appreciate them. Uh, give some respect to our ladies. And you can start off by getting uh, Omar's book, 
<laughs> I have named her inspiration. I have named her inspiration, and I know you didn't bring it here with you, but maybe off the top of your mind, you can give us a little bit from one of those poems. <coughs> oh man! <laughs> I know I got you on the spot right now, uh, but I'm gonna give you a breather. Okay, that okay. you got one. Um, my head's not. I, I tell you what, I can do. I, I can do one. I can do one. A, a, a poem, as far as the community is concerned. Let's do one of those. All right, real quick. Okay. What we have where I come from is a numbers problem. The problems in the numbers. Black children, premature eternal slumber. Self lynchings over nonsense and mere pennies. Heed the call and response. When I say no more, you say killings. No more killings. God willing, but we seem to have lost touch. I never thought our people could love so much, but we seem to have extreme love for material things, and life just the thing for the taking. As long as fast money's being made, dreams fade where I come from. Innocence dies or early death where I come from. The young bear guns where I come from, and some die just because of where they come from. If you understand where I'm coming from, then maybe you know someone who has lost someone over something that wasn't even worth arguing over, let alone making final arrangements. Let me tell you how deep the pain gets. We're talking about a very small town. We could feel every death that goes down. You can almost smell in the air. Reminds me of a story once told, Mississippi burning. Not the movie, the real stories and the numbers. The nearly 5,000 unnecessary necessary deaths, the swelling of grave sites. Whose dream is this? Whose vision? Those nasty streets only live in one... We're going we gonna to stop that one right there. All right. Now, I'll tell you what, man. You was killing me on that one. Okay. Super, what do you think about your father's poetry, man? Uh, I think he's a great poet, and I support him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we come to a close of this show. Uh, again, we want to remind you, if you can walk, you can dance, because life is a dance. You learn as you go. Sometimes you lead. Sometimes you follow. It don't worry about what you don't know because life's a dance. You learn as you go. Ladies, meet me on the dance floor. Guys, beat me there. Tune in next week each and every Sunday, 2 to 3, Little Jacks Radio Show.